Hello my soccer universe. Well, still not feeling all that great, but content needs to go rolling and I thought a oh, while well, I take a break from resting. Let's talk about probably the most exciting title race in Europe and also one of the most underrated leagues in Europe of what's happening over the past week because it's only a week uh, roughly that I made a video. However, meanwhile I had the full turnaround. So there we go. We have another video uh, on these weeks and I think very, very timely. Uh, in the Netherlands, we had the big one between Feyenoord and PSV, a duel that held everything that it promised. Absolutely gore, uh, a tremendous game. Had me gripped. It really had me gripped. I, I, I remember uh, just, you know, uh, lying in front of TV and, you know, watching your phone and then I just could I thought it was Real Madrid also. I just could not turn my eyes away. I had to watch this and watch i did it was a really really great game and in france we actually had two rounds thanks to a midweek round um and uh it also was it was so funny because i mean over those two rounds everything went almost psg's way maybe without the exception of monaco who were who got two uh unremarkable but uh, still big wins for them in uh the uh, i don't want to say title race but you know champions league race but all the other opponents for PSG were falling away, falling away like flies, be it Lens, be it uh, Marseille, of course. Um, it all looks like everything is rosy at PSG. However, PSG had a pretty rotten week themselves. Uh, yes, they got two wins. Yes, they both looked unconvincing, but I think the biggest one is that in the winner at Montpellier, where they actually looked okay, Mbappé not only missed two penalties, I mean, retaking one and both times uh, saved, but he got injured and he's out for the Bayern game. And for PSG team, that does not look good at all over the past few weeks. Uh, that much got to be said. I mean, Bayern didn't look good for most of, of the time, but I see a little bit of a bounce back there. PSG looks like a team that just gets the job done, but there's really not much more than that. Um, it seems like again a coach doesn't have any grip on the on the squad. I think the one thing that has to be said though is that maybe with just Messi playing, the team looks a little bit more focused. And you know, with Ekitiki up front, maybe. But uh, at this moment, as much trouble as Bayern are seemingly having, uh, I find it really hard to see PSG moving on over Bayern. But Enough of France for now. Uh, let's go to the Netherlands, where we had also a midweek game uh, where Walwijk beat the uh, go-ahead Eagles 3-1. Three, three but then it was all on the weekend, where it also, like uh, France, it went for PSG. This weekend went very much Ajax's way, and Ajax are very well back in the mix, if you want. Uh, at Z, to, uh, despite having um, a relatively easy game at Voltam, although they got a 1-1 at Ajax, uh, they found themselves 1-0 down, but then our man up since uh, Oristiano got sense and sent off. Otkart equalizes in the 83rd, but it's not enough for a winner. So at that kind of take, take, taking the first hit. Uh, we, of course, had that Utrecht winning 1-0 over Herrenveen. So this is one of the teams that is up there, but I think Utrecht is not part of the title race, uh, at least at this moment just yet. Uh, a title race that is very much uh, characterized by loads of draws at the moment, which makes it things even uh, more interesting. I think of the top six, if I see it here, um, all but two teams had only draws over the last two rounds. And the team that was winning twice, Ajax, had three draws before that, or I think even five or six draws before that. So rather interesting stuff. And it is Ajax who got a pretty big win at Cambuur and our new coach Hatinga. Seemingly, you know, I really had the feeling that Alfred Schröder doesn't get the Ajax way. I'm not saying Hatinga is a great coach, but you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of change of message uh, and, and, and whatever, and it gets rolling. And when Ajax get, 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 get the rolling, can get scary. I mean, Tadic opens it, and Berghoi scores a double, and then Brobe scores a double, uh, make it a very convincing scoreline, and kind of sending a message to all the others. You know, guys, if you don't start winning, we as Mel might, might swoop in and get that title, because we are still, we are hanging around very, 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 very much so. But a draw is what was happening between Feyenoord and PSV, um, but what a draw it was. That was 
and apps. I mean, first of uh, more and more, they call it. I realize in more and more, uh, not that I knew it before, but uh, if you want to have an atmospheric game in the Netherlands, the Kuip is the place. Uh, it's just an amazing stadium. Um, and the atmosphere was absolutely uh, electrifying there, which makes for even a better place to, uh, to, to, to be. PSV came with a very good counter at, um, attacking stra a, 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 a strategy where uh, a pass out from Kirk G was in, in the second. Javi Simons sees El Ghazi on the side very well and a new requirement from SS and Villa. He, he, he gives it a 1 0. However, a few minutes later, he needs to come on. Bakayoko is calm, coming on to kind of take uh, over. But PSV really did it well, kept the game tight, were always dangerous on the counter attack, and actually uh, had a, another chance by uh, Simons. Second half, though, Feyenoord came out storming and had a mega chance that I don't know how this did not get in. And then seemed to be really getting the upper hand. I mean, they were uh, encircling PSV. It looked almost like a handball game. And when Obispo got sent off uh, for a stamp with the um, uh, sole of the foot on a, a thigh, it was pretty clear, this is going to be fair in another game. Except that it wasn't. Because just a few few minutes later, Feyenoord, of course, with all the crowd support behind go forward and and uh, PSV can at, uh, make another nice counter counter again. I think it goes over Simons to Luc de Jong who plays it out to Torgen Azar who had just come on a few minutes or earlier, um, of course on loan from Dor Dortmund. Lancer thought that was not offside when he got the ball and it's 2-0 PSV and you think everything is not going PSV's way. Although Feyenoord has so many shots and creates so many chances. And then the game was kind of almost peeping out until uh, Jan Baksh, Ali Reza, Jan Baksh, uh, unleashes a rocket. Nah, it was not the rocket yet. This was a, a header, a crossing from either either sea and a header. And it's 1-2, 81st minute. And then it was 20 minutes left because there were 9 minutes also. So I Feyenoord laid siege onto PSV. They get them. The equalizer in the 95th minute of stoppage time again through Jan uh, They could have gotten a winner there too. Uh, PSV really just barely hang, 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 hang on. In the end, I actually think that this draw suits Feyenoord a little bit more, although it's potentially points drop. But uh, that fight back showed the uh, voice of the champion, and let's see where this will go forward. I think if Feyenoord would have lost this game. They still would have been in the lead, uh, would have been in the lead for the league, but I honestly think this might have hit, uh, hit them a little bit harder. Now, the one thing it has to say, the Feyenoord still have, have, have beaten any one of the other big two. They only had a draw against Ajax, they lost to PSV in a 4 3 early, now they have a 2 2, so they have only one big game left. And I think if you want to underline how great you have been uh, in the league, if you win the championship, uh, you might want to get a big win as well. And then to top it off, Twente, which is kind of the uh, fifth team in there, uh, also on, on, on get a 1-1 one, one Groningen, a one uh, team that is seriously rele rele relegation threatened to at least stop a losing streak. Stein gives them a very early lead, but Antman then equalizes. And so we had a very interesting round, uh, finishing almost in a stalemate, if you like. As I said, Feyenoord still two points ahead of AZ, but Ajax now making the leap ahead of PSV and only three points behind Feyenoord, which is kind of the position where Ajax, you know, you, Feyenoord cannot stumble any, anymore. AZ also can stumble, so, 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 so stumble any, any, anymore. So we're hitting, we're hitting a point where uh, this title race could tip. Then we have really good teams in Twente, Sparta, Utrecht, uh, in there, Herrn Wayne having had a really bad form as, as of late, so they are falling out of the top uh, leagues as well. I think they had now four losses in five. Um, on the bottom, again, Groningen and Kankankampur seem like those are teams that have to go down. Um, if we look over at the uh, expected standings, it is still Feyenoord, but now just two points ahead of Ajax uh, and then PSV at Z slated to finish in fourth but let's see about that on the on, 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 honestly uh 20 and Utrecht making out the top uh feeling you know the top six and as i said on the on the bottom it looks kind of the same 
Going forward, we have starting tonight the Dutch Cup. Um, we have AZ against Utrecht, which is, I think is a really interesting. We have PSV against Emmen. PSV did not, uh, has lost that one. We have the big one between Twente and Ajax. Feyenoord not playing against Nijmegen is also not a bad game. And then I give the uh, matches for the next two rounds. Um, AZ against Axelsior, PSV against Groningen, Herdenveen against Feyenoord, again not an easy game for um, Feyenoord, uh, and Ajax against Valwijk, uh, just the matches of the top four. And then a week later we have Feyenoord against AZ, another big one. And probably this is now very well timed that I will make a video after, after that. We have PSV against Utrecht and we have Ajax against Sparta Rotterdam, so uh, lots happening there. Moving over to France for uh, the midweek mid round, and it started out with uh, Nantes losing at home a rather tight one against Marseille. Um, it was one where Marseille then just found the breakthrough through an angle through Joao Victor, not the one that played for Lask, of course, uh, and then got a second one through Unahi. But um, I had the feeling that you know this could as well end in a nil nil as uh, well. Other notable results, of course, the big one is probably that last lost at home to Nice. Nice having, as we will see, an absolute peach of a week. I just don't have a Nice jersey, hence I'm wearing Monaco. Uh, winning at last, who have been really, really pressing PSG and potentially opening a title race. And Laborde gets a 1 0 win. Gotta say, the jersey that Nice played in the away jersey you saw it in my Liga re review, of course, is uh, one of my favorites in Liga this season. Um, Monaco, on the other hand, got a, you know, it's a 3 2. Uh, it was 2 0 at death through Benyed and Benzegir. Uh, Ablin pulls my back, uh, and Bolo re established a two goal lead, and then, very, and then a few minutes later, Da Costa makes it 3 2. But I think uh, a win it was, and that's the, that's what counts most. We also have, before we go to the PSG game, uh, Stadren uh, coming back to winning ways with a 3 0 over Strasbourg. But that was only a blip along the way because Stadren also look a little bit off. As I said, does PSG, who actually had not a bad game and they got an early penalty, full full of reserve that uh, twice got saved. Uh, first, of course, the goalie was off or off of the line. Uh, Mbappé's penalty, then Mbappé, I think, goes the other way. And it's again saved. And then a little bit later, he injures himself and he's out for uh, around three weeks, which is, of course, not, not fun. And the things uh, con con continued. It was all with offside and, and so on. Messi had a goal disallowed that was an offside in the 35th. Akimi, similarly, there was an offside in the build up, although the shot was really from far out. You really thought it was not PSG's uh, day until Fabian Ruiz finally gets the breakthrough. Messi finds a messy second. Uh, not the puts one back very late, but then saying MMM just a few minutes later, finishes off the game and a result was a perfect day for PSG. However, with the injury for Mbappé and did not look good. I do have to say though that I think in that game PSG looked much better than they looked against uh, Toulouse where they found themselves down to a free kick from one of the greatest named footballers at the moment uh, around Van den Boomen for, uh, and first name Branco. Branco of course reminds me of the Brazilian who scored his famous goal against the Netherlands in 94. So Branco Van den Boomen, Van den Boomen what a name, what a free kick. Uh, giving um, uh, to lose a 1 0 lead at PSG. And meanwhile, I think the Pacte Points is not such a place to be feared anymore. Uh, Hakimi gets an eek, 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 rather than a game, kind of hangs a little bit in the, in the balance, but PSG kind of take over as, as well in India. It's a messy shot from, shot from far, 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 far out that gives PSG the 2 1 lead that in the end was deserved, but it did not look all that great. Um, but again, it is that the, um, that the opposition, except for Monaco, did not do anything. I mean, Stadren lose at home 3-1 uh, to Lille. And again, Stadren is not looking good. They take an early first minute to uh, gear, 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 read, then it's um, Zegorova uh, in the 59th gets an equalizer and then lay, lay down two goals for Lille. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen any highlights, but uh, I've been looking at the form from Stadren. They have a, a loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, a little bit spursy from last season, in a way. 
Uh, again, another win for Monaco, uh, kind of unremarkable. Um, other interesting, of course, Brest and, not, uh, Brest and Lance only a 1-1 one, one for Lance again. So they have been falling out of this title race, more, more or less. Um, and then the only team that probably would be in there, Marseille, also lose at home. And it's down to Paul Lopez, not hanging on to, to the ball, making two saves towards um, Nice stri uh, strikers. And of, of course, the Southern, this is a very nasty Southern derby. Uh, Diop and Laborde profiting within short uh, periods of 38th and 44th. Um, also, has to be the starting lineup was a little bit odd because there was no Malinowski, there was no Sanchez. Uh, Alexis Sanchez, as soon as they cut it, they come on, must say, look, look better. Really trying to put on pressure. Malinowski pulls one back, but then very late on, we get, of course, the, uh, the sealer with Brahimi's uh, uh, shot from far out to make it 3-1 for Nice. And so we see PSG with a very commanding 8-point lead now. This was much, 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 much closer not too long ago. But now you see Marseille lost Monaco and I actually could see Monaco swooping in and getting a second place in there which they have been trying to get back in the Champions League for a long time. Stadren also, as I said, for falling out. Lille making a little bit of a comeback. On the bottom, we are still looking at uh, Strasbourg in the relegation zone, but you see it's quite the dogfight with only Angers looking uh, really bad and also also Auxerre. Um, probably down, uh, I don't I think Ajax, Sot, uh, Strasbourg, Trois, Montpellier, they all have a chance. And you have to really look out who might go badly in there, in bad form in there. Um, if you look, expect is standing, it's Trois, Ajax, Auxerre and Angers, which are probably the smallest teams in there. Uh, yeah, Brest, I think, is also not too big of a team overall. Um, when we look now at the um, upcoming games, we have also the French Cup. Lyon against Lille is probably the um, one good fixture, but of course the big one is OM against PSG. Those are the two pictures. Then a uh, picture that stick out with two more league, uh, not three more league one meetings with Angers against Nantes, Toulouse against Reims, and Lorient against Lens. But I think OM against PSG doesn't get much bigger than that in France. They actually meet in three weeks' time. But before that, the next one is, and this is already before the, before the Champions League, we have an absolute uh, scorcher with Monaco against PSG. That's a pretty big matchup. Um, mm. Ahead of the Champions League tie, so they had that. Why it's played on an early kickoff on Saturday. Uh, the late game Lyon against Lens. Yeah, probably a nice stadium, but not a great game, I would expect. And then uh, later again, another not so easy one for PSG against Lille at home. And then you have to play the Classic. So, it, you know, it's it's a really, really rough road for PSG, but they probably can seal the title in these matches. We also have Toulouse against Marseille, which are two rather big towns. Although uh, Toulouse is not really a soccer town overall. So, yeah, that was it from me. Uh, you can see from my voice, <laughs> not doing all the other great, but you know, doing a video is fun. In any case, I hope I have enough energy tomorrow to give you a Serie A review. I will be sitting there, I can tell you that already. Um, but you will see them. Please let me let know what you th think about the title races in the Netherlands and in France. In France, it seems like it's more or less over. Uh, in, other, in any other way, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.